So let's see if we can stumble forward through putting the top handle on. Now, this boot needs to get smushed through that hole. And there's a way to do it where you take rope and wrap it around and then run it this way. And I tried that. It doesn't give me good luck here and good feelings. So um, let's try the smush method. A little grease on here. I got a ball end Allen here. Let's see if we can get this smushed. I had it before. It did actually work before when I had the whole thing off. Don't want to wreck the boot. 40 bucks. Start grabbing the flange, working it in. Set of hemostats here is working wonders. Good. Top, and they're just going to come. Look at that. Look at this. There it is. Here's your boot. Good. Put all these other fun things up and through. Tank vent. Of course, they had to do this in such a way that it's impossible to push this through. Or just like that, take the tank vent off. Bring the lines up, make sure they're not kinked. Let's go over to here. There's a yellow line here. It needs to get attached to one of these. Probably that back screw there. And there's the black line, which gets attached to a spade connector. Again, a hemostat is going to work here, I think. Let's do the spade connector. Good. This is actually the AV mount. It's metal, so it probably this is probably looking to ground to chassis. Over. There we go. Make sure these are tight. Now we can hook up the AV mounts. Which are these funny bolts here? Two. Problem is, at the end of the day, I'm not so sure where some of these bolts came from.
This is actually a machine bolt here. mounted up. Let's put the lanyard connector on. This actually is a, a really chubby bolt. Goes into plastic. Good. Pay close attention to how this is oriented, because um, I was going to get it messed up. And you can see these two things are sticking out at you. So really, the other thing to do is the carburetor and the intake here, um, and then get the clutch cover on. So on the steel MS200T, I want to explore this carburetor a little bit. I've heard that these saws have accelerator pump problems. Now, I don't really know what that means, so let's have a little adventure here together. Maybe we'll both learn something. I was gonna carb kit this, um, still am. Probably doesn't need it, but while I'm tearing down the saw, I might as well. So let's take it apart, at least a little bit, and see what we see. Four bolts on the top. And remembering the way this oriented is always nice too. Four bolts come out. Metering diaphragm, lever, take the bottom off. And remember the orientation. The screen in there actually looks nice and clean. This is a Zama RB69 kit. Let's pull the screen out. Looks like it's pretty nice shape, actually. Just gonna clean it. Little carb cleaner. And I'm actually going to reuse that. Okay. The way you test if the metering diaphragm is working or not. Use a little brake cleaner. Metering diaphragm lever here. Press down. Yep. And all the fluid should just go down. We'll do it again. If you use carb cleaner, you can actually swell the tip on the uh, the needle. So don't do that. Apparently brake cleaner is the stuff to use. And you can take the brake cleaner and make sure all the passages in there are blown out, especially the where the gas comes in. So the next thing I want to do is I want to... This part looks kind of worn here, so this black piece there and then the gasket. So now we have to make sure that that's all fresh and new and in the right orientation. Gasket. And then the diaphragm. That's correct now. So that's fresh. Put that to the side. Uh, with the pump diaphragm, there's a gasket here. 
and then the pump diaphragm. So we do it in exactly the opposite way here. Pump diaphragm first. Get the gasket. Just like here. And now that's we set that aside, that's ready to be put down. So the used parts we can put in a pile somewhere. Preferably in the garbage, but we don't want to throw those out quite yet. I'm not going to change out the needle or the Welsh plugs or the spring because apparently fluid does actually go down through there, through the passageway. So I don't need to change those out. The issue with this carburetor is something called the accelerator pump. It's behind this brass piece here. The model number on this is a Zama S126. And this is an 807A model, but S126 is, is what this is. So let's see if we can get to that accelerator pump and see if there's an issue with it. So there's a spring here. I'm going to push up and I'm going to release the spring. It's going to come back around and it's going to want to bite you. But let just let it sit there. And there's an E-clip here. Yeah, going to need probably two screwdrivers here to push on this E-clip. Off. There it goes. Now the E-clip is off, and we're going to save that to the side, very important. And then this, the shaft would come out, but we have to take the, the screw and the butterfly valve off. And there's a notch in the butterfly valve, I would assume that that is possibly important. So let's unscrew this. butterfly is going to come out. The brass rod just pushes out. Might have to give it a little tap to pop. That's the accelerator pump letting go. That comes out, goes over here. You can see inside of that hole there's an o-ring there. Apparently that's what goes bad on these things. Move the accelerator pump down. just to push up and pop out that brass piece. You're supposed to take a pick and go up in here. Yep, push up. And there comes the brass piece. So I've got this other screwdriver in here holding the piston down and then you push the brass piece on up. There it goes. Pretty easy. Brass piece gets set aside. At this point, the pump should fall out and the spring. So now we look at it and I guess the overall issue is that these things bind. Yeah, It looks like the the chrome essentially is worn away and it binds. It almost looks like a scored piston. That's the best view of it right there. So you could have acceleration problems if this thing sticks and binds. So apparently the thing to do is to get rid of the o-ring. 
this o-ring is very tiny probably need to take it out with a pin here there we go the o-ring doesn't look bad but you know if they made this out of a different material something that wouldn't bind like that they they need to make it out of something harder stainless or what have you um, wouldn't have this problem so apparently the thing to do is to take this piston drop it down the hole where the brass plug was with a little bit of JB weld and let it cure let that set and that way it won't uh, interfere with the acceleration issues anymore I'm going to mix up a little JB weld here So I got the JB weld on there. I can just drop this piston right on down in there. And you don't want to use too much. It gets goopy and goes everywhere. But now the piston is permanently down in. And we should be able to reassemble this whole thing. This goes back in here. Like that. You have to put the E-clip on here. E-clip is going on. Click. Butterfly goes in. Butterfly screw is on. Got to Got to make sure this can move. But didn't put too much JB Weld on. Wrap this back around. That spring clicks on there. This brass plug can go back in. Probably does not need to be hammered too far. And it's not really going to go anywhere. This is on a face anyway. This spring works fine. This spring works fine. this piece back on here. Remembering the correct orientation. I'm going to put this piece back on here. Again, remembering the correct orientation. back together. The old stuff we're going to throw away. Junk. And some of like the O-ring, this O-ring's garbage. We know that. But this spring might not be, you know, if you wanted to replace the accelerator pump in the future, you keep that spring. So all these parts here still are good. So I'm just going to put all these back in this carb kit and I'm going to label the carb kit incomplete but all these parts are still good and they cost an arm and a leg if you're going to buy them separate so apparently here's the tricky part and I'm going to cheat on this uh, thank you to Matt G for giving me the orientation 
or rather the uh, the order in which this should go. Um, but this sort of stuff here is uh, a significant amount of a pain to figure out sometimes. So I am going to do things his way. So don't forget the ring here, ring. Um, and it helps to have the, the magnetic trays, by the way, because uh, you can see what you're missing, at least when you get down towards the end here. Okay, so I think this is the choke rod. The throttle rod goes here. Put this ring in. Looks like it goes in that way. Maybe I gotta hang this first. Hang the throttle rod first, then the carburetor. Yeah, that's better. Hang the throttle rod, then the carburetor, and get the throttle rod attached down below. Okay, that's better. Ease it halfway down the bolts, then do the fuel pipe. Okay. Right. Way. Actually, all the way down the, the bolts might make more sense. Yep, all the way down the bolts might make more sense. Bring the fuel pipe up. Push from underneath. That makes a whole lot more sense that way. Watch you don't trap the choke rod. Right. Or displace the throttle rod. Got it. Carburetor slides down the bolts. Don't want to trap the choke rod behind there. It just simply slides in here. I thought I had to go into this other hole. It does not. Right there is fine. Now the throttle rod. And then you have to squeeze the throttle to set the choke. That sets. That's off. Perfect. This goes behind here. Tank vent just sits there. Make sure the fuel line's not kinked. Plastic piece goes here on the side, just to cover. Kind of clicks in. Right here. Good. summer winter piece goes over here. Just a tiny little flat blade screw to put that down. I think the openness you can have there to let more heat from the exhaust come into the carburetor area, but I don't think we need that. heat up the air, at least not in the summertime for the summer work. That frame goes on there. Two eight millimeter nuts. By hand, one, two, air filter. There. Air filter cover. Why well, do you always get that terrible sense that you miss something? <laughs> Let's do the fuel filter. Fluffy cap out. Oh, 
just pull this off. If I can't get the thing out whole. Fuel filter goes on, in, make sure it's in the same orientation, And chain, put the cover on, got a new chain brake handle too. Let's see how the cover comes apart. Worries me a little bit because there's a spring inside of here. T20 Torx. This piece is holding it in. Really don't know what's holding this up. spring worries me so let's clean this up figure out whatever's going on inside of here well the first thing that looks like it needs to be done is I could have sprung the spring over there but okay it just had this part broken maybe I'll just change out that looks like it just comes off the pin here this got to come off the pin too That comes off the pin. That comes out. Keep that in that orientation. Pull this out. Just like that. Yep. 
throw in the keeper. There you go. Now that's in the keeper. Okay, now I just need a spring. Spring goes on here. How do I drag it back to there? Maybe the same way I do uh, the huskies. Like this. In fact, identical. Before you do anything else, you got to put this piece back down and in. Otherwise, that spring is potentially going to go flying. This has to sit down there. Not quite in yet. One, two. Eventually this plastic piece will go over there. There we go. Click. Perfect. Now, test it. Set it. Perfect. Now this unit works. Didn't need to change out that. Got a new piece here in case we do need it. Set it. Goes in there. Now we have an MS200T that's back together. I'll get a bar and chain, put some fuel in it, see if she runs. Don't forget to put the impulse line in. Nipple right in there. So here's the impulse line. Right down to there and you're good. That's that. Compression test after milling, a little above 160. So, no break-in, that's where we're at. Pretty good. Like a little higher, but that'll work. Runs fine. Started up almost immediately, so we're in good shape here. Don't have any cutting videos right now, sorry, but thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe.